digital technology eliminated complicated 3D projection needs and brought 3D cinema back to life. This server holds our internal content that we play on screen. Now, cutting edge 3D capture devices are quickly emerging, moving from simple rigs. Now I bolt those cameras together. Uh, I try to, to uh, get a similar distance or a proportional distance to, to your eye to your eye distance. To big rigs, requiring complex mirror systems to close the gap, or interaxial distance, between large camera lenses. Where I get a beam splitter, half mirrored beam splitter, and I put one camera here, and that's shooting right through. And then there's another camera up here, or, or down here, doesn't really matter. And that's shooting off of the mirror, out the front. So the optical axes of the cameras are are lined up so that they're in parallel. But because they don't occupy the same physical space, I can make the interaxial arbitrarily small. Other features on professional rigs include convergence controls, so cinematographers can move lenses in and out, changing the position of 3D objects relative to the screen. And calibration software to synchronize zoom and tracking, so cameras behave more like a pair of eyes. And there are new post-production tools to help fix problems after the shoot. And now, there are actually quite a few tools becoming available that uh, have adjustments to move the horizontal, the horizon or the rotation or even keystone or color or anything like that to, to really uh, tune the, the 3D perfectly and, and to get the convergence plane where you want it. For live 3D broadcasts, companies like Panasonic are working on more compact 3D capture solutions with big rig functionality. We needed to get a camera that somebody could use for broadcast that you could use for, uh, that you could just take out of the box and shoot, like a camera recorder. And so, rather than getting a beam splitter, we went with a smaller imager. And so, I'm able to get these two axes at uh, 60 millimeters apart. Now, your average human interocular distance is 65 millimeters, so this is even a little smaller. But no amount of high-tech stereoscopic equipment guarantees great 3D movies. For that, you need to understand how to use 3D to enhance the story without letting it become the story. When I have watched some movies in 3D, I notice that the producers and the cinematographers are still trying to get you excited about the technology. Look what I can do with this. And you've all heard the story of the severed heads falling into your lap or the spears coming out of the screen at you. They're just shoving things right in your face. Well, that's not realistic. Things like that don't really happen. And so it, uh, to me, that takes, it makes it gimmicky. It takes away from it. Your brain only has so much ability to process this dynamic, quickly changing depth information. As the 3D storytelling matures, there will be more of a sense of, I'm really there present in the scene and I'm more immersed in the story.